Hello students. As you know, we had started flow measurement, and in that, the very first type, obstruction type flow meter, we have started to study. And there are two types: differential pressure type and variable area type. So we were watching the basic principle, and the basic principle is that whether a flow is viscous or turbulent can be decided by Reynolds number. If Reynolds number is greater than 2000 the flow is turbulent and for turbulent and incompressible we have to follow some formula here we have to see this formula and yesterday we have uh, seen that if this is a diagram where this is a channel through which a flow is going on flow of a liquid is going on this is cross section a at a channel and this is cross section 2 and p1 is the pressure v1 is the velocity and z1 is the height at cross section 1 p2 v2 and z2 are the values at cross section 2 okay yesterday we have seen bernoulli's equation according to bernoulli's equation the total energy per unit volume before the obstruction is equal to total energy per unit volume after the um, obstruction that we have seen yesterday in this um, diagram if there is an obstruction at the center this one and it is flow velocity pressure p1 and area is a1 here and at this obstruction point if v2 is the velocity p2 is the pressure and area is a2 so what we have seen yesterday that if there is obstruction then at the obstruction or restriction element will decrease the area means a2 will be lesser than a1 and due to decrement of area the velocity of fluid will be increased at uh, this point of restriction so at the restriction point area decreases while velocity increases and due to both and due to both and if we apply this in the formula of conservation of energy this is a complete formula energy per unit volume before that is pressure energy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy per unit volume that complete one complete energy before the restriction and this is at the restriction so if we apply the changed value new value of velocity and area due to which this h2 height will be uh, height will be uh, decrease so if we will uh, put the new values what we will get this uh, since uh, this velocity is in square term so it will increase the total value in square term so uh, for making both side equals this p2 pressure will be decreased so by taking any experimental value also we can uh, prove this that if at the obstruction point as the restriction element is present then in that restriction point if velocity increases then pressure decreases okay so th this is uh, the equation that we get this is the uh, uh, result that we get from the bernoulli's equation and the bernoulli's equation output is reduction in pressure which occurs when the fluid speed increases this is the result so uh, we have to keep in mind this one when we studying the flow measurement and here also here also if we are doing the mathematical calculation another form of bernoulli's equation is this is p1 pressure at uh, in this diagram at cross section a here restriction is not shown but two points two sections have shown where at one section cross section area is lesser and another section at cross section 2 cross section area is
greater. So there is two different cross section at two different points. So if at cross section one P one is pressure, V one is velocity, and cross sectional area is A one and height is Z one. Okay. Correspondingly, there are values at cross section two. Those are P two, V two, Z two, and gamma is the specific weight of the fluid. So, according to the conservation of energy, according to Bernoulli's equation, this is the equation that we have to keep in mind. Rho uh, P one by gamma plus V one square by two G. Uh, this G is gravitational force constant plus Z one is equal to P two uh, by gamma plus V two square by two G plus Z two. Okay. Now keeping in mind the Bernoulli's earlier equation, if we want to solve this, now what is the condition? If if Z one is equal to Z two, if Z one is equal to Z two means height. This this value Z one means height at cross section A cross section two. Uh, if height is same. Then the earlier one, equation number one, can be written as this one. Both sides Z one and Z two will be eliminated. Now, if the fluid is incompressible, incompressible means the volume cannot be changed. It means that V one multiplied A one. A one is the cross section area at section A. Means if at A one cross section area there is velocity V one. And at cross section area A two velocity is V two. So if V one A one is equal to V two A two, and this is true for incompressible. Incompressible means the total volume cannot be changed. Okay. So from this one we can get V two by V one is equal to A one by A two, and from This equation number two. From this equation number two, we can write v two square minus v one square. You have to solve this equation little more. A, um, uh, try to shift uh, this uh, p two by uh, y in the left side. Then you will get p one minus p two by y. And try to shift this v one square by two g in the right side. So here you will get v two square minus v one square by two g. So this 2g by gamma you will um, get in this way, and the whole formula will become v2 square minus v1 square is equal to 2g by gamma multiplied by p1 by p2. Just you have to uh, do little bit labor. You have to put on it, and you will get from equation number two this equation: v2 square minus v1 square is equal to 2g by gamma p1 by p2, and You have to solve it for v2. What is v2? Velocity at cross section two. Okay. So what we have to do from the uh, this formula, v1 a1 is equal to v2 a2 for incompressible fluid. We can get <coughs> v1 by v2 is equal to a2 by a1. So here. Uh, if you take common v2 square in the left hand side, then you will get one minus eight uh, v1 square by v2 square, and at the place of v1 square by v2 square, from here you can write a2 square by a1 square. Okay, so um, you have to do it little bit, and then we will get this final formula of v2. V2 is in square term. This complete term has to be shifted in the right side, so it will be um, as a divided by term, and then V two is equal to you have to take the under root of complete right hand side. Okay, now this is the final formula. V two means velocity at cross section two is equal to one by under root one minus a two square by a one square, and uh, in the numerator under root two g by gamma p one minus P two. What is P one minus P two? Is the pressure difference? P pressure difference at the two cross section one and two. Now, if A two by A one, A two by A one is the ratio of diameters 
at cross section 2 and cross section 1. So, we know that considering the cross circular cross section, since we know that pipes are internal area is circular, so circular cross section we define beta as the ratio of two diameters. Area means cross, for circle cross section area is pi r square. So uh, pi pi will be cancelled, okay, and uh, you will get that uh, a two by a one is equal to beta square. What is beta? Beta is the ratio of two diameters, and diameter means two into ra radius. That is two r. So, 2R, 2R cancelled, you will get R2 by R1 as beta and for A2 by A1, since it is R2 square by R1 square, so here from this 2, 1, you will get A2 by A1 is equal to beta square. Since here in the formula, A2 by A1 whole square is this one, so here it will become beta to the power 4. So, the volumetric flow rate, this V2 is volumetric. Um, a a velocity at cross section 2. So, volumetric flow rate, volumetric flow rate that will be indicated by Q, Q is equal to V2 into A2. Okay, and put the values that we have got it uh, from uh, beta. So, put this value. So, you have to mark this complete formula. This complete formula you have to mark, and this is the formula for volumetric flow rate. Now see here, area is constant at cross section B, beta is constant, G is constant, gamma is constant. So you can watch that this volumetric flow rate is directly proportional to under root of pressure difference. So how we can measure the pre, uh, flow by measuring the pressure difference at two different sections of a pipe okay and this is the phenomena this is giving the idea how we can use the different flow measuring instruments from the above expression we can see that if there is an obstruction in the flow path that causes the variation of cross sectional area inside the closed cha flow channel there would be difference in static pressures at two points and by measuring the pressure difference we can obtain flow rate okay here we are uh, derived the formula for flow rate for incompressible fluid and the relationship between volumetric flow rate and pressure difference is non linear non linear means it is having the under root relation okay so, we can use signal conditioning unit for making it linear relationship. So, one best example is of orifice meter as you very well know being a mechanical student. Orifice plate is actually a circular uh, disc type structure, circular structure in between there is a hole. So, here if we are taking the cross section of a pipe, so this is the orifice plate, this, this is the flow profile of liquid. Flow is from left to right in this one. This is D1 diameter if it is a cross section 1 and this is D2 diameter at cross section 2. Okay. And you are watching that both are having the area difference, diameter difference and uh, by putting that formula just we have derived for Q volumetric flow rate by putting that value we uh, can uh, measure the flow rate. And how we will measure the pressure difference? The pressure difference can be measured using any manometer. Manometer means a U-tube uh, like structure in which mercury is there. And by measuring the mercury difference, uh, I, we, can, uh, we can measure the, I am showing you, how can it be measured? Now see this one. This one. This is manometer. This is manometer. How we can uh, uh, watch the uh, pressure difference? See, this is the orifice plate. And here, uh, if there is a higher pressure, since it, uh, there is a uh, lower velocity, so it will have higher pressure. Higher pressure will press the mercury liquid downward. And at the obstruction,